Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new 2023 RPOD 193 Bunkhouse Travel Trailer by Forest River RV. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and the outside of the RV, and we'll close it all up at the end and show you what it looks like closed as well. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are now up inside the brand new 2023 RPOD 193 model here. So starting out here on the new version, we have a lot of different changes. For the 2023 year, they changed wallboard, ceiling board. The vinyl floor has changed pattern as well. Our wood color has changed inside. Countertops have changed inside cabinetry hardware has changed so an overall new color change look for the r-pod inside we're going to start here in the kitchen area kind of work our way back so up top here we have some overhead cabinets the gray stone hood range light and fan you have a window overlooking the campsite area or on inside area of the rv that window does open window in your door is thin shade ready so there's an aftermarket shade that you can buy to block off that window if you want now looking from inside out you can obviously see there's a window but when we're on the outside looking in it's a really dark tinted glass door so you don't really notice the window as much during the daytime however at nighttime when the lights on in here you do kind of notice it so i would definitely recommend getting that shade aftermarket up here you have your awning in and out button, slide button, awning light strip button, porch light, interior light. Uh, you have the little um, IRV technology radio here as an HDMI input, also has a USB charger here, uh, zone one, zone two for inside, outside speakers. And it does have Bluetooth so you could connect your phone to it as well. On the side of the cabinet, you have electric outlet, and then there's also the monitor panel, the water pump switch, and the propane water heater switch. The electric switch for the water heater's outside. You'll see that when we get out there. New tire pressure monitoring system. I'll stitch a video in at the end to kind of go over this with you. But really nice, you can see what's going on with your tire pressure and temperature when you're driving down the road. Little flip up lid here for your two burner gas stove top. So you can flip the lid down, have a little extra counter space, or when you're cooking, you could flip that up and it's gonna act as a backsplash. But propane stove top. Large sink here. Down below, you have some storage, and you also have your convection microwave. So you can cook or microwave either one. Just below the microwave is the propane leak detector. Going on back here a little bit further, you have the Norco gas and electric refrigerator. So freezer on top, refrigerator on bottom, and again, gas or electric, so you can use it either way. Below that, you have your electric box with your breakers and fuses. This breaker box also auto detects whether you have a lead acid battery or a lithium, acid, uh, lithium battery. So depending on what type of battery you put on it, it'll basically know what to do. Not all of them do that. Next to that is going to be your central vac. They set this up from the factory to basically be a dustpan vac because you have all vinyl floor in here. If you take a broom, sweep everything into the dustpan vac part of it. It does not come with the hoses. If you want the hoses, you can order those off the vacuum maker's website aftermarket. Propane furnace there. And then you have a little mirrored door here. And it's basically a large pantry.
Over on the right side, you have your bunk area for the kids. So you have a ladder built in here to get you up onto the top bunk. Each bunk has a window that opens, and then you also have USB charger port and a light at the bunk as well. Same thing down here. Up here you have your digital thermostat for your AC and furnace, then you have your solar charge controller here. It is a by Go Power. it's a 30 amp solar charge controller. The unit now comes standard with a solar panel on the roof, where last year's version it was an option. Up top here you have a turbo exhaust fan up here to help get all the moisture and stuff out when you're in here taking a shower. Skylight up above as well. ABS tub surround here. Foot flush toilet. Step in shower. There is an area back here for your towels and linens and stuff. So you can cram quite a bit of stuff back here. Little sink area back here as well. Now, the sink also or shower has the shower miser on it, which basically helps circulate water so you can get it to temperature and then actually turn it on. Um, so you're less likely to run out of water if you're boondock camping, but also so you're not sitting there again waiting for all the cold water to run and become hot while you're getting in the shower. So you're just trying to save some extra water for those boondock campers there with that shower miser feature. Light switch here on the wall, and there is also an electric outlet down here as well. Now looking forward here, we have our slide out area here. And in this area, you have a little closet area here. So there is a hang bar up here, and then you have a couple drawers. Some overhead cabinet space as well. Window behind the sofa there does open. Now this sofa will flip down and make into a bed. So you could sleep an extra guest or two depending on their size right here. Little table there, freestanding table, so you can use it in here or take it outside, whichever you prefer. Looking up at our ceiling area here, you have Coleman AC couple indoor speakers here you have the 27 inch 12 volt TV over there on a swing arm so you can maneuver that around electric outlet and USB charger port on both sides of this sofa here now the sofa here will flip down and then your main queen bed will flip out so you got plenty of room here for sleeping. Over on the left side is the inverter controller as well. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention underneath of there is actually some more storage. That big window across the front also has a pull up and down kind of nightshade and will open as well. But overall, a pretty nice new look for the R-Pod here for the 2023 changeup. We're gonna head outside. I wanna show you what it looks like outside and some of the features. And then we're gonna come back in and close this thing up. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, we're now back on the outside of the new 2023 R-Pod 193 travel trailer here. Starting on the door side of the RV here. We have power awning, LED light strip built in, adjustable arms for tilting for water runoff, manual override in the front arm head in case of an electronic failure. For the 2023 version, they have new graphics outside. So you'll notice that as we're walking around, some little different stuff. They still kept the little frog guy up in the corner here. He's been around for years doing a lot of different things on the R-Pods. 
You have a pass-through storage compartment here going across the front of the RV. Baggage doors are held up by the magnetic holders. Has a double entrance step getting you in and out of the RV and that is a traditional hover style step rated for 300 pounds. Does have aluminum step plates as well. You have the black glass entry door. Doesn't really look like there's a window there during the daytime, but at nighttime, you can kind of see through it a little bit. So it is thin shade ready. You can get that thin shade from uh, Lippert's website. Definitely would recommend doing so. You have two outdoor speakers here. You have a traditional porch light as well. So you have your LED light strip and a porch light both. Deep tent safety glass windows. There's a stove exhaust flapper up here you have to open when you're cooking. The black rectangle here is going to be your refrigerator access panel for maintenance and venting purposes. There's also a little suburban griddle that comes with it. You can see pop up in the picture here of another one that we've done. Uh, basically kind of what that looks like. But you also have your little table here and an electric outlet there as well. Now the gas line for that is just behind the axle here, so you would actually plug in back here, allowing you to use your gas griddle. Cold water spray port, black tank flush, and your furnace exhaust out right here as well. Black tank flush, very important. When you're flooding the toilet tank, make sure you have the gate valve open so that it can rinse everything right out into the sewer system. You don't want to have your gate valve closed, walk away and forget about it, and then it goes flowing back up through the toilet into the camper. So be very careful when using that. It is fiberglass exterior attached to the Asdale composite material. Really nice improvement for fiberglass campers. Basically, it is a man-made composite material instead of a wood luon board. What that basically is going to mean to you is it's less likely to have any type of delamination issue from water leakage. Um, that's basically the fiberglass attached to the Asdale. Uh, nice feature to have on the construction of the RV. Check out the Asdale on board website for more information about that. Uh, it's a good thing to learn about. Traditional four inch square two bumper on the rear end. A lot of people like to store their dump hose in those bumpers. Uh, they have little end caps on them that will remove so you can do so. Spare tire mounted on the rear. You have a ladder to help you get up onto your roof. Speaking of the roof, you can see up here in a couple of these pictures, we have plumbing stack vents, AC skylight, TV antenna, uh, big solar panel up there as well. So you got to get up there from time to time and inspect and check and maintain the seams and seals. Doesn't matter, you know, if it's a PVC roof, a TPO roof, a fiberglass roof, or whatever, they're all going to have these same type of holes in them that you got to get up there and maintain. Now, these larger R pods have the PVC roof with the lifetime warranty on the material. The smaller R pods have a one piece front to back fiberglass rolled roof system. So, depending on which version of the R pod you're looking at, you have two different types of roof systems. Now, up in the top center here, it's also pre-wired for a rear observation camera by Furion. Would definitely recommend getting that. It allows you to see what's going on behind you when you're driving down the road and also when you're backing into a campsite. So, a nice feature to have. Power cord is roughly 25 or 30 feet long. It is a detachable 30 amp electric service cord. Next to that is your cable and satellite inlet cord. Or, uh, so you basically can hook up to a campground's cable if they have it. They have some storage here, but over here on the left, this little wall is a panel that comes unscrewed to get to the back of your six gallon gas electric water heater right here. That allows you to bypass or unbypass it for winterization and summerization steps. Flipping down the door of the water heater here, you can see 
inch and a sixteenth drain plug in the lower middle, electric switch to turn it on electric in the lower left, pressure relief valve in the top center. Relieve the pressure before you try to drain it. Make sure there's water in it before you turn on the electric switch or you'll burn up the heating element. Now down below here you can see the dump area here. We have gray handle and black handle to dump things out with. Pull your black first, get all the nasty out, pull your gray next to rinse everything out. Just to the left of that, low point hot and cold water drains. The unit also has an enclosed underbelly. The unit is riding on a torsion flex axle. Goodyear tires, six lug wheels, aluminum wheels. Again, has that tire pressure monitoring system we talked about earlier. And it has 12 volt drum brakes. Make sure you have a brake controller in your tow vehicle to work the brakes on the RV. Now the slide out is a Lippert in-wall slide or Schwintech slide it used to be referred to as. It has two 12 volt motors to pull it in and out. You'll see that at the end. We'll kind of go over that. It is prepped for sole air slide toppers. So you could add a slide out awning cover to it which would help repel water, leaves, twigs, debris, help shade the top of the room. So talk with your sales guy about that if that interests you. Nice feature to add to your RV. Just up here by the storage door is going to be your gravity fill fresh water tank and your city water inlet. And down below is the fresh water tank drain. You have to remove the cap to let out the water. Just inside of here, you can see another panel that's removable here on the right. So you can get in there for winterization stuff to get to your water pump and things. But also up on the ceiling right there is your 2000 watt inverter that comes with it now. On the side here, we have some informational stickers we're going to pop up for you here real quick. The first one popping up, production date sticker. This basically tells you the day it rolled off the factory assembly line, has the axle size, has the uh, VIN number on it, but most importantly here, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to, axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Do not exceed that number, very important. Next is your unloaded vehicle weight sticker telling you how much the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. And it also has the length on it as well. And next is your tire, I'm sorry, next is your cargo carrying capacity sticker basically telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross vehicle weight on the first sticker. And last but not least is the tire sticker telling you tire size but most importantly here, telling you tire pressure, the cold tire pressure that you should try to keep it at. This is important number here also when you program that tire pressure monitor that you put in the right cold pressure for it as well. And again, refer back to this sticker on whatever brand or model you might be using. Up front here, you have the bubbled out tented window. Now this window will actually open and you could basically either block off with the nightshade or lower down the screen shade and kind of see what's going on and let some air flow through the front. Also would have act as an emergency exit window if needed. Power tongue jack here on the front has a manual override built in light. Single 20 pound propane tank some customers like to add aftermarket a dual stage regulator and a second propane tank. You could do so aftermarket if you want. Talk with your sales guy about that. Comes with zero batteries from the RV maker, but it comes with one from Couches RV Nation when you purchase from them. There's room for possibly a second depending on the size of battery. If you wanted a second one again, talk with the sales guy about adding that on there if you wanted. Down here, you have a little blinking light, which is a sensor that's sending the tire pressure information to the monitor that would go in your vehicle. There's also a battery disconnect there. Heavy duty scissor jacks on each corner 
to stabilize the RV. A good cordless drill and a socket, zip them down, does the job wonders. Two inch hitch ball, heavy duty safety chains, seven way Bargman wiring plug for all your lights and stuff. A little bit of lower diamond plate metal across the front. Nicely rounded and sloped front end as well. All right, we're gonna head back inside. I wanna show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back inside the new 2023 R-Pod 193 here. We're gonna close this thing up for you, show you what it looks like closed. So when you are ready to close it up, very important to make sure your floor is clean. Nothing could be in the way of the slide out. This bed has to be in sofa mode up here because when that bed is down, the sofa comes out too far and blocks the slide from coming in. So this just flips up or flips down to go into bed mode like we've seen earlier. But that basically blocks the slide at that point. So you do have to make sure this is up, out of the way. As long as that's in sofa mode, you're good to run the slide out in. Make sure again your floor is clean. Come right back here to your slide button and all you gotta do is hit the in button. This is the Lippert in-wall slide, used to be referred to as Schwentech slide. It's basically two 12-volt motors that bring it in and out. One on each side. Comes right on in, not real far. So with it in, I still have full access here to get to my bunk area, my kitchen area, my bathroom area. Pretty much using everything in the R uh, in the R pot here without interruption except for the front bed. You can't put the bed down when the slide is in. So very important to make sure that if for some reason it was to malfunction, you know how to manually get it out as well. On Lippert's website, they have a whole bunch of information about these Schwentech slides. And there's a section there that kind of talks about manually doing things. The little motors are up here in the top corners. You can pop those out, push it out by hand. Um, again, you very rarely ever have an issue with something like this, but it's nice to know how to do it in case of an emergency situation. Definitely check out Lippert's website, lci1.com, for more information on stuff like that. They got a whole lot of stuff on there for all different brands of RVs and things that you can learn about. Thanks again for taking my time, taking your time to watch my RV videos. I really do appreciate it. If you know anybody looking for an RV, check out the folks at Couches RV Nation, guys. They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. Will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, I wanted to take a second here and just kind of show you the basically unboxing and what uh, this tire pressure monitoring system actually does. Um, so this thing here has a lot of great features to it. We're going to open it up here real quick, show you what it's all about. Okay, so I got the box cut open already here just so we don't accidentally stab ourselves on video or something stupid. So when you get it out, you have a little instructional code here. You got a little scanner here, but basically it's kind of telling you, you got a monitor, little 12 volt uh, lighter adapter thing here with USB charger cord and your suction cup mount holder. Um, got a little sticker here that comes with it, little warranty registration card and stuff like that. Here you can kind of see a little mount, it's plastic. It's got a little magnetic holder, but suction cup up to your window. It's your little cord. And then you have your five inch screen here. 
and it's got a little sticker on it. I take off the little sticker. On the side of it, you do have your on off button and your little charge button here. Um, so you kind of see what it looks like there. And it magnetically attaches here. But let's turn it on here real quick. So you kind of see what this all looks like. Now I have already programmed the four tires and stuff. Kind of went through this, cheated a little bit here so I knew a little more about it before we started the video. Uh, but you can come in here and you have different setting controls here for it. Um, so we can come in here, change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, change it from uh, PSI to bar. Uh, you got miles, kilometers, hours, you know, 12 hours, 24 hours, feet, meters. You know, again, kind of do what you prefer depending on where you're uh, located at. Coming back in here, we got our tire pressure alert. And this will do up to five trailers, up to six tires per trailer. And this particular camper that we're in, if you remember that sticker, that tire sticker I showed you earlier, it told us 50 PSI cold. Now, when it comes in from the factory and you unbox this, you gotta actually come in here and set that because it's at basically zero. So just come in here, type in your pressure of whatever the sticker tells you on the camper you happen to own. Hit this here, exit and save. Then we can swap tire locations. Again, depending on our trailer, we can kind of come back in and swap locations, do different stuff like that. Um, automatic code detect. Again, go to our trailer one, and then we're gonna step outside here, show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're back out here and we are looking at the tires. And you can kind of see the screen here. We're going to hit our little settings button, auto detect code, trailer one, and then we're gonna pick a tire. I've already got the code in here for this particular one, but to redo it, we're basically gonna hit the learn button. And then you're supposed to wave it in front of the tire. You hear the beep, it'll pull up the code, save and exit. And then you go do your other tires as well. And you can kind of see here different codes for each tire and it will do up to six tires. So for people with toy haulers and stuff like that, you know, triaxle units, pretty cool little setup. Now, when you're done doing all your tires, you can again do a manual mode detect if you know your codes for each tire. Um, you can connect and disconnect trailers and stuff like that. So you got quite a few different things you can come into this screen and do. Vehicle ID, uh, date and time, sensors for your battery, or your battery sensors basically, kind of telling you what's going on with them. Um, so a lot of neat stuff built in to this tire pressure monitor here. Pretty cool little setup. Again, guys, thank you for taking the time to watch my RV videos. I hope this really helped you learn a little bit more about the camper, things that come with the campers, and possibly how to use them. Thanks again.